participants, my colleagues panelists, and also the other participants. And I hope that uh, we will be able to learn something together from this discussion today. I think there are many, many issues that we have to bring up. First of all, I would uh, just make a brief reflection on uh, what stage we are now exactly. What is the problem? How big is the problem? Because I think that we are at the very beginning of the happenings. And uh, uh, a few days ago, uh, we received the paper from the chief economist uh, from DigiTrade of the European Commission. And this uh, paper, uh, they, they announce us that they have made a simulation, they have made a false model, and based on a model, uh, DigiTrade is telling us that uh, they foresee a situation in which uh, we will have around 10% of decrease in global trade, 9.7% decrease. Uh, they say also that uh, 9.2 decrease will be the exports of goods and services of the European Union, EU27, of course, and uh, the imports uh, will decrease a little bit less, 8.8%. This is the paper, but in the same paper, the chief economist tells us that based on a different model, we also have a, a sort of forecast of the WTO. And WTO tells us that, uh, that uh, uh, something much worse will happen. In terms of uh, trading goods, uh, the fall could be anything between 13 and 32, 32, 32 uh, percent. For the uh, European Union, the WTO projections uh, show us uh, exports falling between 12 and 33 percent and imports between 20 and 25. So uh, what I was just uh, uh, trying to suggest to you is that uh, uh, I think we are in a very early stage and it is absolutely difficult, if not impossible, now to make exact projections. We can uh, understand the nature of problems that we will be facing. We see our industries and we talk, of course, with industries, with SMEs, with various sectors, and they are telling us the uh, the hugeness of their problems. There are entire sectors which are which have closed down. Uh, uh, not to speak about tourism, about restaurants, about uh, uh, hotels, and and so on and so on, and other sectors which are the automotive sector. Uh, uh, apropos the German economy, of course, which is uh, heavily relying. But if German economy is relying on automotive sector, then also my uh, economy in Romania, uh, which has as the most important partner the German uh, economy and the German automotive industry, is also uh, uh, facing heavy, heavy problems. So uh, uh, we have uh, difficulties in understanding exactly the stage in which we are. We know that the problems will be huge. We just cannot, it's difficult to predict how huge they will be in numbers and then uh, uh, just to uh, just to uh, try to answer uh, in some in a few points in five points i prepared five points of answering the question of this discussion uh, what would fight the great uh, uh, recession the great problems in world trade uh, i would mention five things of course there are several others first of all free and fair and open trade I mean, we have to make all the efforts to stick to the idea of free trade, to not uh, let the temptations of protectionist unilateral measures to, to define our actions. And when I say we, I mean also the European Union, but also the member states of the European Union. We are the champions of free trade and we have to stay to remain the champions of global free trade uh, and we have to find our allies to, uh, in order to do this. My second point, uh, a very strong support and continued support for the international rule-based trading system. And everybody knows that the WTO has huge problems. Uh, uh, the WTO uh, has, uh, 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 has had some problems even two or three or four years ago, uh, even before President Trump, the WTO, had some problems and the restructuring of the WTO was on the table but without result. Now we have some positive results, for example, the litigation system which 
uh, is uh, the new litigation system which is initiated by the European Union, but we have to fight as a European Union as a whole, but also at, uh, as, as, as uh, uh, um, influential member states to maintain and uh, restructure and reorganize the WTO. My third point, and of course we are the SME Europe of the European People's Party, so my third point would be strong support for SMEs. Uh, support meaning finance, support meaning uh, 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 barriers to trade, uh, support meaning an internal, uh, very well, better functioning internal market and access to e-commerce and, and many, many other things. I will not uh, enter into details at this stage. Then my fourth point will be, and, and uh, uh, Tudor uh, just mentioned that we have uh, had a meeting, we are at least two members of the European Parliament in this panel, uh, Sean Kelly and myself, we had a meeting today with Commissioner Hogg, and it, of course it was a virtual meeting, but uh, we discussed with him the issues of the EU trade agenda. And of course when, when the uh, points on the trade agenda have been set two months or three months ago for 2020, we did not have the COVID crisis. Now we have it, and the agenda will have, of course, new priorities. But still, some points have to be maintained. For example, the uh, negotiations agenda of the European Union. I mean, we have to have something for Brexit. We have to have something in the following months for the new trade relation between EU27 and the UK. Hopefully, the closest possible, but the closest possible not uh, uh, according uh, 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 to the thinking maybe of our UK partners, but according to the interest and the regulations of the EU, which is today an EU 27. And then China, and I will not enter because China is a topic uh, by itself, it would be the topic for a seminar only to discuss about, about China. Then our ongoing negotiations with Australia and New Zealand, which are also, of course, very important in uh, the sense of diversification of our uh, of the EU free trade uh, agreements network. Uh, and my fifth and, uh, and uh, last point would be a strong defense of uh, the strategic sectors of the European Union. And here I have to make uh, two, uh, two points. First, what do I understand under strong defense? Of course, a strong but always WTO compatible defense. I mean, we can uh, have uh, new tools in our, in our trade toolbox, in trade defense instruments. We have the FDI screening, as colleagues have mentioned already, but uh, all our tools have to be WTO compatible. But then the second question under this headline, what does it mean strategic sectors? And I believe that the crisis has shown us that some sectors which uh, maybe two or three months ago were not so very important, not so very high on the agenda, are indeed strategic sectors. So let's have a discussion. Of course, it's not only a trade agenda issue. It's also something about for the internal market, for the new industrial uh, uh, plan of the European Commission, which was presented and so on. But we have to define after crisis, uh, bearing in mind the, uh, the lessons that the crisis uh, taught us and will teach us in the following weeks, uh, which are the really strategic sectors of the European Union. If it's necessary, let's redefine this list and then let's uh, uh, protect uh, in a, w a WTO compatible way, let's protect our strategic interests. That would be the first intervention. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Winkler, for um, that very sober analysis. Um, in the beginning, uh, highlighting two very important points. First of all, that we are very early on in this crisis. And secondly, that there is a very big lack of predictability. So this is a main issue for, for the business community. Um, thank you also for your five-point um, uh, scenario, solution. Mm -hmm.